What is up YouTube? Welcome to the channel where we don't only buy things for our own desires, but we buy them to show them off and review them in the channel. We'll see if they're good. And today, we're going to review the AMD RX 7900 XTX graphics card. We're going to see exactly why this costs $1,000 by reviewing the full features and reviews and what you can push out this card. Now this is just software for running games. If you want to see the game performance, skip to about around 9 minutes and 20 seconds. Starting off with the software itself, it is very easy to use and packed full of features such as overall global experience settings and the ability to take games and put them as their own independent settings such as custom default type or RX equal and performance RX. It comes with game analysis and independent settings so you can customize them to your liking as well as the Available AMD FSR 3 with AMD Fluent Motion Frames, which enhances and generates frames with DirectX 11 and 12 API applications to generate a boost in frame rate. You got Radiant Anti-Lag also, which reduces the input lag between your keyboard and mouse and peripherals to get a enhanced gaming and feature without any latency lag or input lag. You also get the ability to record and stream directly to YouTube or any streaming platform of your choice. You have live stream options, recording features, push to talk features, scene editors for your live stream, which you can edit in the software itself, as well as, of course, browse your media, which I don't have any, and link your accounts and record the quality settings and your preferred resolution and frame rate. You get performance stats such as the ability to mount this window on a secondary screen and view your temperatures and your FPS's. You can also choose to overlay it in case you only have one monitor. That way this will show a little transparent overlay as well as have a game detection in case you don't want it to display all the time. So when a game plays, it will just pop up as needed instead of popping up all times. But you also have the ability to overclock and tune both your CPU if you have an AMD card and your GPU as well, right through the software itself. It's not showing my CPU because it's glitched out, which will happen sometimes, but all you need to do is restart it. Make sure to do this if this happens to you as well so it doesn't cause any errors. But say for instance, if I wanted to customize my tuning of my fan, for example, even overclock to get some more VRAM for whatever reason, I can do that. If I wanted better cooling, I can also adjust my advanced control and adjust the fan curvature. So apply that, and I should go into overdrive. Fan speed at 2,093 RPMs. You also have your metric settings themselves so that you can set different preferences for that little overlay menu. You also get smart technology such as AMD noise suppression, AMD privacy view, and smart access video for newer deep GPUs and other types of CPUs. It's unsupported on mine. I have a 7000 series, but this is for other types of rigs such as APUs and something I don't even know about. Anyway, besides the point, you get a whole menu of your different games you can independently set your settings for if you wanted more performance or if you wanted eco modes for laptops who want to save battery performance and heat. Most importantly, if you're crowded like me in the case, you might want an eco mode. But for me, I just open the case and go performance. This is my in general settings. You have super resolution, radiant super resolution, which enhances and upscales to push more FPS. Uses FSR2 and FSR3. Layman's terms, this boosts your frames per second. You also have AMD fluent motion frames, which generates extra frame rates for FSR3. Layman's terms, this also boosts your FPS. 
If you don't want any input lag from your keyboard and mouse, it also offers radian anti-lag, which adjusts the not only the frame rate, but also the response between your keyboard and mouse. You also have radiant boost, which improves performance by also using anti-lag adjusting resolution. It comes with radiant show, which conserves power and reduces heat. This works by detecting if the user has been away on the same menu screen like Call of Duty forever. It'll ramp down the FPS, chill it out, and then when the user moves the mouse on the menu again, it'll ramp back up to its full performance. Get image sharpening and video upscaling technologies for not only games, but also media and video editing softwares. It comes with Radian Enhanced Sync, which is an alternative V-Sync mode. Instead of enabling into the game to minimize frame rate tearing, you can enhance this alternative one by the video driver. That does a little bit better. You can also set it to manually wait for vertical refresh rates and also f target the frame rate control as well as access multiple other anti-aliasing methods. So you can choose whether to go by the game or to have it run by the device driver instead. You also have the display settings as well which allows you to enable AMD FreeSync for NVIDIA it would be G-Sync but we're on AMD. You have virtual super resolutions, which is the ability to upscale f higher than the native resolution of your monitors. Say, for instance, if I got a full 1080p panel, I can technically upscale up to 4K. It would just fit to that panel. So that's what virtual super resolution can take advantage of as far as your display settings. You also have the ability to change your custom colors and pixel formats and color depths and so forth manually. I want to touch that. It does a good job of automatically tuning it for you. You also have game advisors. For some reason, it thinks Adobe is a game. But, say for instance, if I were playing Call of Duty last, this would tell me how my game did and recommend how to may improve it or tell me that it's doing a good job running at excellent performance. You have your software settings as well as your hardware and drivers details. You can set your audio settings or your video profile. You have different color schemes such as default, cinema, enhanced, home video, even outdoor, sports, vivid, and custom which is a custom brightness. It has a little slider. I just like to keep it standard. You also have your hotkeys on how to get to shortcuts on the software. You even have stream VR tools if you're, you had a stream device and your overall preferences for your stream. Enable web browser. You can you, you can get animation and effects. You can turn that off in case it's lagging your system. You can also enable a web browser, as I said earlier, in case you wanted to browse while you're using performance or whatever. I don't know what, what that would serve, but Steam also offers that, so it's very useful if you're in a game. You can also resolve problems such as your game trying to always force itself in full screen you can enable this app to show always on top that way in case the game is trying to force its way forward that would actually help for gameplay performance I featured a variety of games including Bounder right here which is a zero gravity FPS shooter it takes a little to get used to with this game, but it's a really fun replacement for Call of Duty if you don't want to deal with Call of Duty's spoop. I'm running all of these games I'm reviewing here and a full ultra as high as I can get them on this card just to get a general and layman's terms which you can push out the car. I mean, I could go into full detail and every resolution and all that, but it would take too long. So I'm going to show you the monitor here. 
where it shows my stats and a little bit of gameplay with it. And again, this is all ran and ultra as high as I can, both in driver and in the game. So you get a general idea of like how high you can push it. I mean, once you lower the settings, it actually improves the performance anyway, right? So if it's already high, you can only imagine how high it can get. I mean, there is a limit to how high your setup can get it to, but with this kind of car, you can get pretty nifty performance. I mean, look at Call of Duty. It's running at damn near 500 frames per second at a full 4K. I mean, that's impressive. Depending on who you are, you might be Team Green player or a NVIDIA card user. They are really power efficient. That's what I heard. My card, I looked at it. When I'm usually playing a game, it shows me 200 watts to about 400 watts, depending. But besides that, I love the card. I mean, it ran Star Citizen quite decent, considering it's very memory heavy and CPU heavy. It's like everything heavy. It ran at its highest settings and uh, consistent 60 FPS. Sometimes. When indoors. Not all the time. It's a beautiful game. Of course, I couldn't leave out Star Citizen, the latest from Bethesda. I argue that this game is could have done better, but uh, that's besides the point. I'll probably do a review talking about that later. It's not that the performance is bad or the quality is bad because the game looks really amazing in a 4K setting on a 4K card, especially on this one. It runs around 80 to 140 FPS max, and it's a really good performing game as far as is one of Bethesda's space games. It's their first ever space game they made. It's decent, but I don't feel like it's necessarily immersive like Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen. Star Citizen is buggy, but it lets you feel more immersion and more interaction with its ships and interiors and even in the stations and the landable planets themselves. I mean, Elite Dangerous is a one-on-one -on -one scale of our Milky Way universe, and it's got aliens and a lot of other things. Besides that, the performance is great. It's amazing. Speaking of Elite Dangerous, I'm also going to be covering Elite Dangerous. I couldn't get some gameplay, as in like the recording of the game, but I got it from my phone here, and it's running an excellent 200 to 300 FPS. It's not bad. This is full settings on every game, HDR included. Most of these don't support ray tracing, but I'll let you know if one of them I have ray tracing on. And of course we have Grand Theft Auto Online at the club. This game performed just a little bit lower, but it still looks buttery and smooth. It's got a very, very high graphic fidelity. Yeah, maybe I'm over exaggerating, but it looked pretty crispy. Running about 80 to 90 FPS. The recording of GT4 actually didn't come out for some reason, but on my phone, I got it recorded at uh, around 70 FPS average. It's not bad. You gotta remember though, if you scaled it down just a little bit, you get more performance. So if that's the max, you can push more performance out of it if you scale the settings down. Even in high, it's still a good setting. Because even in high, it's better in console. Consoles usually run low to medium settings. Fun fact. I also got some racing games like The Crew here running at a good consistent frame rate of 100 to 110. FPS. I also included Forza Horizon 5. It's really pretty actually. A lot better than the Crew Motor Fest. Ah, no offense if you're a fan of that game. But this game looks really good. Running full settings at 
200 to 220 frames per second. And if you're a track fan, I also included Forza Motorsport, the 2023 version. It actually looks really, really good running at a solid 80 to 90 frames per second. Skyrim really takes the cake here with the most detailed 4K right here. That like outside looks stunning. Look look how much detail there is in the rocks. Look how much charcoal and rocks and, and the leaves. See how detailed the leaves are? And it's not even losing a frame. It's running 110 to 116 FPS. If you notice, I've been keeping this in like a kind of like category order, but I've also included Hogwarts Legacy, which is also another CPU heavy game, running at a good almost 200 FPS, a magnificent improvement from my other card. I remember a lot of people complaining about how they couldn't run this game, and it's kind of improved over time, but having a better card also helps. I also decided to include another adventure game. It's actually really fun. I'm gonna have a review video on this pretty soon. Pow Worlds. It's a pretty fun adventure game mimicking Pokemon, but I can't say that because that's not what it is. Um, what? Anyway, it ran a pretty good 60 FPS and a little over, but it dipped down to 57 every now and then. Last game on the list. I have a bunch of other games, but it would take even longer than it already has. This is one of the only games that I'm running ray tracing in, but it's Outlast Trials, and it's running a magnificent 280 to 300 frames per second. That's impressive. Magnificent. Well, that will wrap up this video. If y'all have any comments on what I can do better, or what game you want me to review, please let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe for future content. I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace out.